Welcome into Birds Huddle, powered by PointsBet, along with Barrett Brooks on this beautiful April day. I'm Taryn Hatcher. We appreciate you for being inside and at your television. While it's so sunny and warm, Barrett, so it's, good. Not, it's not exactly what I would call or I, what I think of when I think of football weather, but it is oh so welcome. Oh, all weather is football weather, and especially now. It's like 70 degrees outside, sunny. In fact, I would love to be outside playing football right now on a football field with a football. I thought for sure you were going to say like grilling or <laughs> fixing a car or building a fence or an airplane hangar or something because that's fair does all of it in case you're wondering. Uh, April weather also means it's just about time for the NFL draft. And right now on our website, NBCSportsPhiladelphia.com, Ruben Frank released his latest mock draft. And that brings us to Barrett's three-point stance. Sans numero uno, Rube kept it real in his latest mock draft. How's this? He had Howie Roseman trading both first round picks to move down. He also had them move their second round pick and their third rounder. Just a whole lot of wheeling and dealing. Here's a quick look at what he ended up with in the early rounds. Uh, I mean, you got Witherspoon, Iowa linebacker Jack Campbell there, edge rusher Derek Hall from Auburn, as well as receiver Tyler Scott, a speedster from Cincinnati. Barrett, how would you like this haul? It, I don't I don't know how Rube kept this organized with the wheeling and dealing and how he would end up where. But what do you think where he landed? I, I, mean, I like where he landed. You know, you look at it, he got Devin Witherspoon, probably the first or second best cornerback in the draft. Mm -hmm. He got Jack Campbell, probably the first or second best inside linebacker in the draft. Derek Hall is a really good, consistent, explosive pass rusher. Tyler Scott is a receiver, big receiver, you know, fast receiver. Uh, you know, this, this, is, this is a great guy. He runs a 4-4-40 also, you know, so. And then uh, Antonio Johnson, um, he's done everything he needed to do to really make sure that he crossed a lot of T's and dotted a lot of I's in this mock draft. He gained one more pick this um, in this draft than he did, than they had before. I like this, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, look at Weatherspoon. Weatherspoon's a guy that he can go in and, and, and play day one, but he'll have, he'll have the time to go out and look at two pro bowlers in front of him. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing. Two guys that can go out there and really ball, show them the ropes, kind of like what you saw back in the day with Bobby Taylor and Troy Vincent, you know, when, when they had Lito Shepard. He was able to go out there and look at those guys, learn how to be a pro. And that was the biggest thing that Lito um, really took in. He saw how to be an NFL quarterback from two of the best quarterbacks in the league. Troy Vincent was a pro bowler back then. Bobby Taylor had his fair share of pro bowlers. He learned technique. He learned the game from guys that had been there consistently. Well, the same thing. If they were to go out and get Witherspoon, he could go behind Slay. Bradbury, learn how to play the game. Avante Maddox, you know, see where he fits in with everything. Greedy, you know, Greedy's there also. Greedy Williams is there also. Mm -hmm. that's, that's great when you have a young guy that can see how the game is played. You know, take it all in. Not being forced to play absolutely right now, but to learn from those guys and maybe get a rep or two, play some special teams. But that's what you want, um, you know, when you look at guys like that coming out in the draft. So, yes, I can see him doing that. It's almost like the impact you hope everyone in the linebacking core last year might have had on the Kobe Dean coming. Absolutely, up. absolutely. All right, moving on to stance number two. The Eagles will end up drafting a running back. And, Barrett, we're not talking B. John Robinson, though we did discuss him a couple weeks ago, but somewhere on maybe day two or day three. And actually, the guy Rube had them taken was your guy, Deuce Vaughn, from K-State, Barrett. Tell me I, all about I'm it. finally starting to wear on, you know, Rube right now. He's <laughs> finally starting to get it. You get quality players from Kansas State University. Yes, he's not. You're not looking at, you know, Alabama or, or, or Georgia. But, yes, this guy right here, even though he's five foot five, 175 pounds, if you read the article that Rube wrote, you'll see how explosive this guy is. This kid can play this game at a high level. You know, over the past two years, he had third most yards in the, uh, the BCS. Third most in the BCS. He had eighth in touchdowns in the BCS. Uh, 15th in yards per carry in the BCS. So it's not like, you know, he's just playing in the Big 12 Conference. We're talking about out of all the conferences put together, you know, in the SAC, the Big 10, all those power conferences you say. He was up there with the, you know, with their records and everything else. So Deuce Vaughn may be small, but he's explosive. He understands what he, you know, what his place is on the team. If he comes to this Eagles team, it's not going to be like a Donnell Pumphrey type 
type of pickup. You know, not, not get him. He's a small back. We're trying to compare him to Darren Sproles, even though Darren Sproles is a Kansas State guy. And he kind of emulated him in his playing style. We'll, we'll say that. But Deuce Vaughn is an explosive player. You know, he's just a ball of muscle. That's all he is. You know what I'm saying? He's just short, compact, and he's to the point. He gets lost in between those big towering defensive linemen, offensive linemen, and is very productive in how he does. And plus, He'll be great in the return game. He's fast. He's quick. Probably runs like a 4-4-40. He can get up the field, make guys miss. He's elusive. He can, you know, really come in and, and really grind his way into a place on this team, whether it's the kicking game, whether it's a third down back. He does it all. He can catch out the backfield. He is a really um, explosive player that we, he, he could definitely make a mark here. And this first segment is brought to you by the Kansas <laughs> Tourism Board and Kansas State University. Uh, finally, Contavious Street going to fit right in in Philly. The newest Eagle had his introductory press conference yesterday. Just like Darius Slay, he prefers to go by street and street only. Safe. Take a listen. It's just simpler. And then uh, a lot of people like to add on stuff to my last name. So I've had a lot of people call me Street Money, Super Street. They just add on stuff to it. So I feel like it's a lot more to play with versus Kentavious. You know, Kentavious has a bunch of uh, margin for error. So I try to avoid that, you know. And what were your impressions of the organization uh, from the outside? So from the outside looking in, it looked like the players, everyone dealing with the organization really enjoyed uh, coming to work here and I feel like that's very rare in our line of work it can be very grueling of course it's very demanding and to be able to come in day in day out and smile and enjoy being around your co-workers that's special man it's rare and uh I'm, I'm so happy to be a part of it I can't wait to get around all the fellas Eagles organization, it's world class. Barrett, how are you feeling about this guy? I like it, you know what I'm saying? And what he's saying has a, makes a lot of sense. He's coming into an organization which they love to be around each other. This team loves each other. So it's a great organization to really bloom, bloom and blossom into. You know, that we love flowers around here. So he has to set his roots in and become a player around it. But, I mean, when you look at this guy, I think that he got better from leaving the 49ers and went to the Saints. Got more explosive, better pass rushing moves. Um... He has become a player that, you know, made people notice him. So, hey, if his mama call him street, I'm going to call him street. You know what I'm saying? So let's just call him street. I, I like the pickup. I think he's going to come in and compete. Uh, him, and, and, him and Williams, you know, will we'll, we'll battle it out. This is good for them. This is good for him. He's a, definitely a good pickup for this Eagles defensive line, you know, so. All right, well, with the springtime uh, theme here, we've planted the seed, but we've got much more birds <laughs> huddle coming up ahead. As we break, here's the playbook that we hope will blossom throughout the show. Brought there we to you go. Your Philadelphia area Cadillac dealers. We'll continue Barrett's prospect breakdowns by taking a look at Clemson's Miles Murphy. Plus, we're joined by Devin Still, a former second-round pick himself, who along with his daughter Leah has made national headlines over the years, inspiring so many. And we've got an updated look at the odds to be the first overall pick in the draft. Stick around as we bloom around the <laughs> Bird's Huddle is powered by PointsBet. It's time to get your swagger back with PointsBet Sportsbook. PointsBet, 